lucky person? Yeah, go ahead, Jonas. Hey, Ricky. Um, we, we talked to Coach Dorn recently. He talked about how he felt the game in, in Starkville was a, was a missed opportunity, and you know, did you guys kind of really shot yourselves in the foot? You know, you know, in college football, those those opportunities to to pull off a big win, it, you know, it's rare to come back again. Uh, Saturday, you guys have another big opportunity in, in, in front of you. As, as an older guy, what's the conversation been like in the locker room? Like, you know, we had this other chance in front of us. Let's make sure we take it. Honestly, we've just been having that, you know, that that, that forget mindset, honestly. Um, we just been trying to take everything, you know, day by day. And we we know that we didn't like the offense. We didn't come out as, you know, as high as we normally did, you know, like you said, we shot it like Coach Dorn said, we shot ourselves in the foot. But I mean, that's part of the game. You win some, you lose some. But now we went back to the tape. We went over the mistakes that, you know, that we did, I mean, we, you know, that we had when we played against Mississippi. And we just went to it, corrected it. And, you know, it was on to the next game, at the next, next opponent at that, at that time. Corey? Ricky, I wanted to ask you about the, the crowd. Obviously, over the last two games that you guys have had, uh, there's been plenty of plenty of fans there at the beginning, and obviously the student section's been around at the end of games, but this feels like the first, you know, big game atmosphere uh, for the season, especially at home uh, for the fan base. You know, how important have they been to you guys' success at home so far this season, and, and what do you expect to see from them uh, and how big do you think they'll be this coming up Saturday against Clemson? I mean, um, it's going it's going to be very very big coming up for this uh, for this Saturday against Clemson. But I mean, it's 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 what you expect though. I mean, honestly, honestly, uh, I just I mean, honestly, it's just what you expect. I mean, I really ain't got nothing else to say about this. It's what you expect. It's part of the game. Okay. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Todd Gibson. Yeah, Ricky, uh, Clemson's obviously not to a, to a great start, and they look vulnerable. Do you guys look at them and say, hey, we, you know, they're looking like they're a little bit wounded, and, and you guys feeling a little more confident heading into this game because of that? Uh, we look at every opponent the same because, you know, anything can happen on Saturday, like anything. Just like with uh, Toledo and the other team that I was playing, like anything can happen. It's football. So, I mean, you don't want to overlook an opponent and the next thing you know, you're going to play down to their level or whatever the case may be. And then, boom, you get a smack in the face. You get like a wake-up call. So, no, we treat every opponent like, you know, it's a championship game for us. Uh, JB Ricks. Hey, hey Ricky, uh, what are you seeing on tape with Clemson's defense? What, what makes them so good? What makes them so dominant? And uh, are there any areas where – you guys will be able to uh, take advantage of Smalls. I mean, Clemson got a good uh, defensive line. You know, their defense is really good. Uh, the linebacker, however you say his name, uh, Scalzi or whatever, um, he's a he's a solid uh, guy that they have that's inside their linebacker core. Um, I mean, they move well. They flow around. I mean, they got a good defense. Uh, we just got to keep looking at tape, studying the tape on how, you know, what we need to do to be able to have success on, our, on the offensive side of the ball. David Thompson. Hey, Ricky. Let, let's you know. Let's assume you guys win this game. What is the statement that that makes to the rest of the country, and and the statement that it makes to ACC? I mean, it just a, it's just a statement that you know that we always been having ever since you know since last year. Uh, you know, we just want people to know that we're here, we are hungry, and like we are, we have you know a chip on our shoulder. We're a blue collar school, so we're gonna get our hands dirty if our hands need to get dirty and we don't want to be the team that get overlooked. Alex Sawyer. Yeah, I think kind of going off that blue collar mentality, Dave Doran yesterday when we talked to him singled you out as having a couple really good blocks as a running back. How much pride do you guys take in that in the running back room of having that protection? And then how important is that heading into a game with Clemson where, you know, they're probably going to be in the backfield zone? Honestly, um, <laughs> honestly, we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, 
I mean, that's something that we harp on. That's something that we, you know, I take in the younger guys and we'll study the tape with, uh, whether it's with Coach Rope or either by ourselves on, you know, the type of defensive schemes that they have. And we, you know, look at what type of rushes a, a person is. And, like, we just put in our mentality that we don't want to have the quarterback touch because we can always make the protection right for us. Jonas? Yeah, perfect segue. Speaking of protection and, and blocking, yesterday Coach Doran said how Clemson's defensive line, they're doing some different things this year. They switched their fronts. They're very active. Um, from your standpoint as a running back, what, what are your keys? What are you looking for? What's, what's, what's your uh, – what are you processing from the time the play comes in and to the time the ball is snapped when you're looking out over the front seven? Honestly, when I look at the front seven, I'm just getting my read keys on who I need to key in, you know, whether it's a run or whether it's a pass. And honestly, I have keys for whether it's three down or whether it's four down. So, I mean, basically just applying my rules because we have rule breakers for everything and just applying my rules and just relying on my coaching, my ability and, and you know, my talent that God gave me and just taking it, you know, just going by the keys and trusting, you know, basically trusting the process and everything that I've been taught thus far. And I mean, I know Grant makes calls up front and Devin will make, he'll make calls when you see things. But do you guys verbally communicate to guys, like to Devin or anybody, based on anything you might see? Uh, we do. We come to the sideline. We'll make adjustments when it's time to be made, um, when there's adjustments to be made. But for the most part, everything is on uh, Grant. You know, like Grant is, you know, he's the man when it comes to that. And whatever, whatever Grant say go, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to apply the rules that we need to abide by. Does anybody else have anything for Ricky? Oh, good to go. Ricky, thank you. Appreciate you calling in. You said. Media.